Hey guys, it's uh, late fall. It's around the 20th of October. It's kind of a cold day, but it's a little sunny. But I thought it'd be a good opportunity to show you uh, a late fall wild edible. And this is hackberry. So it has an edible berry. Come on in and I'll uh, give you a little close up of it. So hackberry has simple leaves that are toothed, they have teeth along the entire edge, and the one nice easy way to identify this is the leaves are asymmetrical, meaning they're not even. See how this side is higher than this side? So that's one easy way to identify them. Another easy way to identify it is the leaves get these little galls on them, and that's some kind of little bug, it's called a psyllid or something like that. And it supposedly doesn't harm the tree, but the hackberries tend to be covered with these little nymph galls all over the uh, leaves. Now, hackberry has alternate leaf arrangement, and you know, if you've watched my other videos, you know that means there's a stem on one side, it comes down a little bit, and then there's a stem on the other side. The leaves and stems are not directly opposite one another. Now the cool thing about this is it gets an edible berry and it's just a just a tiny little red, orange, purple berry, the color berries, and it's kind of dry and there's a big seed in the middle so there's not much meat on it. extremely sweet and really tasty. Now I'll try and show you the seed. It's kind of an oval shaped seed. Let's see here. Put it right in the palm of my hand. And it's kind of round, oval shaped. Now inside this seed is a nut meat. The out outside is really hard but inside is a soft nut that you can eat. And uh, what I read is you can actually take these and crush them up, blend them up with water, let them sit overnight, and you'll have hackberry milk, similar to almond milk. So I think we're gonna go ahead and try that, and I'll probably do that in a different video. But they're really hard. You can break them open with your teeth, but it's probably not a good idea, because they are very hard and you can kind of see hopefully you can see the little white nut meat inside of there mm. real good now the trees are just loaded with these berries and they'll even last in the spring if the squirrels and birds don't get them because they are a favorite of squirrels now come on in And I'll show you the most distinguishing feature of the hackberry, and that's the bark. Let's get around this branch here. But the bark tends to get these, um, underneath it's kind of smooth, come on around here, where you can actually see close. It's kind of smooth, but it gets these raised, barky, or corky substances on it. And this isn't going to harm the tree at all. But there's little layers and lines in here. It probably doesn't show up very well on the camera. What I'll do is um, I'll uh, take you back to my house where there's some young hackberries growing. And I'll give you a close-up of the bark. And I'll show you uh, a sapling hackberry. And then another one that's a, a little bigger. So you get an idea of the different size trees. And that way you can uh, distinguish them easier. Alright, so here's a young hackberry tree. This one's probably, I don't know, 30, 40 feet tall. But you can see the bark underneath is smooth. And then it has these raised ridges. And if you look at it from the side, it has a very corky texture. There's layers of bark. And you can see the lines in those layers, and that's one of the most distinct features of the hackberry tree. 
And if we look right here, here's an even younger sapling, but it still has those corky ridges and the smooth gray bark. And this one's only maybe 10 or 12 feet tall. Now this is that same mature hackberry tree that I broke the piece of bark off to show you the ridges on and the corky texture. But if you come around here, it has a much different look. So keep that in mind. Not every hackberry is going to have this distinct bark feature. That's why you need to pay attention to all these other features like the leaf arrangement, the asymmetrical leaf, and all that. But it's a really good late fall wild edible hackberry. You can find it throughout North America except for the far western states. And there's a similar species called sugarberry which you can find from Indiana south and westward. And if you don't live in North America, there are hackberries that grow throughout the world. They're just slightly different species. And even um, Homer, the Greek writer, back in like 900 BC or something, he actually wrote about the hackberries. And uh, natives have used them. You can take and crush up the whole berry, seed and all, crush it up real fine and use it as a seasoning. So it's a, a good tree to know. And the berries are just really good to eat. It's a good trail now. Well, there's not a lot of meat on there as far as the fruit, but it's something real tasty to uh, eat when you're out and about. And if you're lucky, like me, you can find a tree where the berries are actually no, low enough for you to get to them. I'm gonna go ahead and gather up a bunch of these to make some of that um, hackberry milk. And I was thinking, I forgot to mention, uh, the hackberries are really high in protein, really high in calcium and phosphorus, and of course, probably a lot of other nutrients. And again, they're really sweet, so they're probably a good source of carbohydrates. So if you're thinking survival, protein, fats, and carbs, the uh, hackberry might be a pretty good resource. and that the berries last on a tree all winter long if you're lucky so it's a good option for late fall winter survival okay so besides being a good source of proteins fats and carbs which are the essential nutrients for survival um, I want to mention that there are some look-alikes to hackberry hackberries in the elm family and more recently from what I've read, it's been classified into the hemp can the hemp family, which includes cannabis. But it's easy to tell the difference between the lookalikes. The berry itself. Whoops, probably a little too close there. The berry itself looks similar to a black cherry or a choke cherry, but the berries are arranged singly along the stem. Whereas choke cherries are tend to be in clusters. Plus with cherry trees, the leaves are going to be different and the bark on the tree is going to be different. Now also, since it's in the elm family, you could confuse it with an elm tree because the bark may be similar and the leaves may be similar. But if you pay attention to the asymmetrical leaf and the arrangement and all the other features that I showed you, you should have no problem distinguishing hackberry or sugarberry from elm and the main difference is elms don't get little fruit on them or droops as they're more properly called um, they get little samaras which is a flat seed that is kind of kind of looks like the old 50s uh, UFO so that's the way to tell the difference between the lookalikes Thanks for watching. Thanks for all the comments and support. So I read that the uh, squirrels and birds really like these hackberries, so it can be kind of hard to find them. But it turns out squirrels and birds aren't the only things going after my hackberries.